so I got uh, on the on the floor a job posted thread mill uh, operation, and uh, we didn't have the thread mill insert. It was a thirty six pitch, uh, twelve millimeter tall insert, and so uh, as a result, I'm gonna uh, have to run the job on a single point tool, and so what you do is uh, I just jumped ahead of my thread mill operation I put pu I, I push the uh, turning thread toolpath button and uh, that posted this path and uh, I want to I want to show you first uh, you know an interesting uh, concept that is unrelated to this we're making a half by 36 thread but if you if you go to slide from table same metric M profile. I don't have a 13 and a half by one, for example, but I've got a 12 millimeter by one. I could grab this 12 millimeter by one, this constant number I have to remember, 0.0213, uh, and I can I could type in here 13.5 millimeter, and then re-input the constant number 0.0213. And it gives me the minor diameter for that thread. So if I, I can cut a thread that isn't in the table. But uh, for what we're doing here, uh, we have we have left hand 36 pitch inserts. And so I went to a tool library, pulled the tool that I had. And uh, I went ahead and uh, and set up this tool. And uh, in the setup, you know, what, what that process looks like is you draw the tool. You know, and if it isn't what you want, uh, you know, as far as I'm aware, you, you click this setup menu and, you know, if it's vertical, you flip it horizontal. If it's, uh, you know, on the left you or the right, you reverse the tool as necessary. You put it on the turret you're on. So I put it on the bottom turret. Uh, it's default active spindles, the right spindles. So the, the software doesn't say it's crashing if I go to the, the spindle that I want to cut on. And I give it a spindle rotation, okay, that, that, that part is the most confusing part of this software. Uh, you know, the, these little icons seem to output something a little different than the, than the drawings, uh, imply. So don't count on this. You need your setup operators to actually, uh, verify spindle rotations are correct. Uh, but, but I was flipping this tool ad nauseum and I couldn't get what I wanted, which was, which was insert up on the, uh, lower turret right hand spindle side and what I found was in holders I had to fl I had to go from internal uh, you know one of these is right probably this is probably right to internal left and at that point it flipped my tool so I'll show you what would happen if we if we drew the tool with the wrong holder see it flips it and I can get it over here but I can get it over here insert down but I want it over here insert up and so yellow is insert up, orange is insert down. And so uh, that's insert up on the right side in the orientation I want. Um, so we're going to select from table. Uh, I think it's going to be a United National Extra Fine. Uh, we're going we're to pull a half by, and we don't actually have... Uh, a 36 there. Let me see if I can uh, find it here. No, we're not actually going up to 36 pitch. So my problem is going to be that I'm going to have to do what I what I just did uh, and show you guys. And so this 01505 is going to have to remain. So I put 500 in here and I put 01505 in there. And this is now set up to cut a 36 pitch thread. Now we're going to add further complexity to this, unfortunately, because uh, I need to start here, minus 10 thou, because I don't want to crash in the bottom of the hole. And I'm going to have to end out here at, uh, let's say, 50 thousandths. And uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself uh, 
Let me see. I'm going to give myself a stock clearance of 25. And I'm going to give myself a, a reference point of 430 and negative 300. And I don't know if that's actually going to work. Uh, and it looks like it may even may have. Let's see. So there's my reference point. I'm negative 300 on the subspinal side. And Z, I'm at 430. And I zip into the hole. And this is going to depict it this way. Uh, the, the, the back plotter depicts the end of the tool here. Uh, I mean, uh, zero point is the is the insert center. But in fact, you're going to touch this surface here. So as long as this yellow line doesn't run into that face, you're going to be good. And so that's not actually a crash. And as you can see, I have I have several passes here, and I chose to post this thing in. Uh, let's see here. And that that reference point was important there. And so this is a this is a left hand insert cutting a right hand thread. So you go to the back of the hole, insert up, and we pull back toward the front. And that, that's said to help with ship control. I haven't really found that to be completely the case. It's almost impossible to pull the thread in this, the, the, the chip in this direction. But, uh, this might be a little bit better, uh, than, than, than the opposite for, for process stability. Just a, just a touch. Uh, so I got NC code format box, uh, I mean, I don't know what, uh, it's equal area right now. And, uh, that's, that's interesting, uh, because the first cut is really deep. Uh, I think I'm going to give this more passes just as a, who knows, uh, I and mean, what have we got for total, for total thread depth? We got 15 aside. So, it probably stands to reason that I can only cut about three thou at a crack. I could probably cut this in as many as as ten cuts. Uh, I got I got one spring in here. I'm trying to make this relatively burr free. I don't want to use the alternating pattern for that reason. So I'm gonna try. I wonder what longhand looks like. So let's go in here and. Uh, and see, so my first cut is, is still quite deep with this constant area method, which is a little weird. Uh, if I got my uh, which axis down here in the in the, the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, which axis is really moving, and that's Y. And here I've got Y twenty two nine point two two nine. And, uh, here I've got 236, so I've got a first pass depth of seven thousandths. Now that's not, that's not terrible, I guess. And then after that I've got what? Uh, this is 236, this one is 238.29. Uh, that might be a little bit light. So what I might want to do is go in here and get rid of that constant area. Uh, well, I guess I'm not even on constant area. Oh, amount of first cut. Maybe that's where the 10 is coming from, even though it wasn't selected. Let's see. Uh, I think 6 would be probably okay. So let's see what happens then. Go to back plotter. Well, that was really weird. Uh, equal area. So we go back to the equal area method and see if uh, we can derive something that makes sense. For whatever reason, it's seeming like that first cut wants to be real deep. I mean, if I check this out, uh, 228, 230, uh, 240. Uh, so I got 12 thou side on my first depth cut. And that's, uh, that's not ideal, um, for this little tiny insert. 
Yeah, I'm only trying this uh, this number of cuts thing. Um, because I'm I'm interested in seeing if I can get better better life. Because I know that these are always a struggle. Uh, at any rate, we've 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 essentially posted the thing, and I, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get to uh, where I can control that first depth cut. Uh, I mean, unless what if I if I put my minor diameter at something smaller than that number? Let's say I put. Uh, my minor diameter at 460. What happens then? So this is now uh, 228 to 234. So that's a six thou uh, first depth cut, and I don't think that's going to actually make any uh, any difference. Uh, you know, all these leads are in different places, which is really strange. So I, I don't like the way that path looks, the longhand path. So maybe what I'd have to do is is just box, uh, use this box path. I'm, I'm familiar with using alternating. However, I also know that alternating makes burrs, and I don't want burrs on this part. And so... Uh, 229, 234, uh, that's, that's 5, or 228 to 234 is 6 thou depth on the first pass. Anyway, uh, that's, that's the thread tool, guys, and, uh, that's how it works. If you, if you select alternating, it's gonna vary the first and second, uh, cut, the, the prime, the even and odd number cuts. And so you'll get your insert cutting on the on the one side and one cut on the other side and the other cut, and it works good. I've used it a lot, uh, but in this case, I'm thinking maybe we can do. And usually, I don't use a spring uh, pass. I, I bring a spring pass in after I do a burr removal. Uh, so I have two two other oper another operation that comes in and maybe, maybe uses a grooving tool and removes burrs. Uh, from from both of these, the lead and the, uh, you know, the exit 45 degree chamfers. And then I bring a spring pass by, which is essentially copy and paste in Simcoe, the last pass the thread tool made. And that operation header and footer and put it back together. And that's how I, that's how I get rid of burrs with alternating threads in production. But uh, we're going to try, we don't have those tools in this, in this machine set up. And we're going to try to use this uh, other threading method to see if we can't uh, get a better result without burr control. Anyway, thanks guys. Catch you later.